I'm about to do something terribly 2005. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, hi, hello, welcome. Would you like to stay for a biscuit or subscribe? Today we're going to talk about artists and algorithms and I'm going to do something so terribly 2005. I'm going to attempt to start a tag, ladies and gentlemen. Because what is time at this point? This is a video I've wanted to make for a while, but particularly during quarantine. Conversations about how to support artists, the infrastructures that hold artists and creators up, has been part of the discussion, it's been up for debate. And as I'm sure with many of us, we're reassessing the ways we've been doing things and wondering if they could be a little bit different. Now before we start the tag, I want to tell you about one of the ways I'm tackling that. So there's been a few things on my mind recently. Social media has become one of the places we turn to for quality content, for company and for courage. And it is the place to find that sometimes but it's not always and it can take a lot of digging. I find myself a little bit of a slave to the algorithm. You might have heard this word tossed around a lot but basically it just means sorting. Now I'm somebody who's got no nothing against sorting. It actually originates from a Persian mathematician called Muhammad al Hawa. If I try and do Arabic pronunciation it comes well. Al Hawa. <laughs> anyway he was alive like 900 years ago. Algorithms have been around for a long time. They're just step-by-step -step rules for solving a problem. Now that is absolutely fine when you're dealing with things like numbers or sheep or money. But after the digital revolution a very new phenomenon is applying that to art. I use the term art quite loosely. Video essays, poetry, I'm used to, I'm loath to use the word, but content. Things that have intangible value and intangible outcomes. You might notice the effect of the algorithm on your own life, particularly when it comes to subscribing to YouTubers. It's happened a lot over the years, but particularly in my last two videos, I've got so many messages from people who are like, your video didn't arrive in my sub feed. I subscribe to you, but I see not the video there. The only reason I know that you have a video is because I follow you on social media. That is because despite your consent, the computer has decided that my video is not for you. Now I'm not offended by this. I by no means think that algorithms are all bad, but they're not humans. They don't watch the video and go, hmm, actually, she really has a point there. Good to be aware that the algorithm can be very biased and I'm by no means the worst hit. For one example, if you'd like to hear about the erasure of queer voices on YouTube, you can look at some links in my description. But one of the main problems with platforms like YouTube is that somebody told the computer that the more videos a creator makes, the better the videos are. The more the computer should suggest them to you. I'm really fascinated in the way um, knowing about the algorithm affects what is made. In the same way that knowing about any kind of market influences what is created. It's the same with the book market, it's the same with the film market, it's a very interesting topic um, that I'm fascinated by. It's occurred to me that in this time of uncertainty I would like to make thoughtful content. That sometimes means more videos but it often means less videos or it means more unpredictable videos. But the long and short of it is without artistic human curators we're never going to be able to discover the coolest things that there are. So basically I'm starting a newsletter. It's called Letters from Lena and it's going to address two things. One, I want to become one of those curators for you. I want to highlight good podcasts, good videos that I've found, good articles that I've seen and I want to make the internet a calmer space for you to be in. So if you're somebody who's struggling to take hold of your own internet use and social media use at a time like this. I would like to be there for you in your inbox every week to show you some cool, happy, gumption filled stuff. And the other part is I would love to be able to tell you about the videos and the podcasts and the writing that I do. After 10 years, I think it's getting serious. So I'd like to slide into your DMs. The newsletter is completely free to sign up to. And when you do, you get a free download of my top holy grail reads ever. It's a printout, you can tick things off, you can stick it on your wall. That's a list that's been highly requested for a while, so I thought, why not give the people what they want? If I'm not a slave to the algorithm, I might as well be a slave to democracy. I'll also be highlighting work made by people in the Gumption Club, which is my Patreon group, and I'll be sending you some creative prompts. So for those of you who enjoyed my Lena's creative lock-in, you can have a little bit of that every week into your inbox. So for my practice, that's one way I see forward. Newsletters, the ultimate algorithmless letter. And it's completely pandemic safe because I'm not physically licking a letter and sending it to you, am I? <laughs> now, onto the tag. If you're a creator of any sort, whether you're somebody who posts on Instagram or you have a blog or you do have a YouTube channel, I would love to hear your answers to these questions because they're not only interesting for somebody who makes stuff to think about, they're also interesting for people who watch stuff to know. And I want to get a discussion going between creators and audiences about what makes a good algorithm, when we need them, when we don't, and how we can support people who make useful content in this climate. There's at least 10 people on Patreon that I just, 
I give them money and I just I just want them to do what they're doing. I don't even watch everything that they make. I just see the attitude with which they make it and the quality with which they make it and I go, please just continue to do the thing. I trust, just have the money, just I continue to do the thing. And I feel quite passionately about those people being able to carry on as well. So I just want this to I just want this to be an opening discussion. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments too. So the first question is, do you spend time researching algorithms and what they want? And further to that question, does it affect what you make? So the answer for this for me is yes, um, because I have been a social media producer and I've done a lot of like stuff within my job to do with digital marketing. I've, and eBooks actually, when I did eBooks, I used to like learn about titles for Amazon books and stuff. It's always been a part of my professional practice to understand a little bit about how they work, what order to put words in, which, which words already seem to be trending, what words to put in the descriptions of things um, so that they show up alongside other things. I definitely um, found out about how YouTube favours weekly videos and like made that more of a priority to do that. I do really enjoy making weekly videos and I'll probably continue but what makes me nervous is the temptation to make more than that. The temptation to kind of half ass things a little bit and make too much that I can't really either keep up with the quality or I miss out on those bigger projects that I'm too scared to approach because of the time investment. I do research what they want but then I kind of pick and choose what I want to make videos on because obviously you know the temptation to make a video that's called Lena reads books about boobs <laughs> or um, I talk about feminism while doing the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> I'm so out of date with my references. <laughs> is interesting and I think that that can be used for good. So for example, I've done a few get ready with me's that talk about capitalism and money, but they will be in the, they'll hopefully have gotten to a bit of the loop of the um, get ready with me algorithm. And people who won't have known they want to discuss capitalism have, have perhaps had some fun there. And I'm sure you can think of other videos where I've done that, where I've talked about something, but also kind of made about something else without making it clickbait. I do always talk about the thing that's in um, the the title of the video, but I think there's an interesting discussion around like using algorithms for good. So I have done research into that and sometimes I've bowed to that, but sometimes I've tried to like work it into what I want to make. Does that make sense? Number three, what would you make if there were no restraints? Now, I kind of know this. I kind of know this because I already do it. I'm writing a book. On my channel, what would I make? I definitely invest more time in the Positive Panic series um, and release it less often, but make it more like ambitious. But I also kind of like the way it's kind of like tip bits of videos, like 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. And I also know that there's also, there already exists these really well made professional documentaries about the climate crisis. They don't, I don't see a gap for one of those, but I do see a gap for conversational 20 minute videos by an absolute idiot like me <laughs> who's finding stuff out with you. So I guess I don't regret it, but I would like to make more of the Positive Panic series. And I'd also probably make more like specific, like I loved making the Emma video and I'd like to make more videos. And I think I will, you know, now I'm saying it, I think I will make more like really specific videos, um, like the Sound of Music video I made that like the algorithm didn't like whatsoever. Uh, and it wasn't very popular, but I, lo I loved making it. I'd like to make more specific ones about really weird musicals. The M1 went well because even though it's kind of like a very niche interest to discuss um, like various adaptations of Jane Austen novels, I think that it got into a good algorithm loop because um, I released it just before the Emma 2020 film came out. I'd also probably make more stuff on nationalism because that really fascinates me and like what being British means because I made a little documentary thing about that with some funding from YouTube and I'd love to do more stuff around that. Number four, if you were told you couldn't upload for six months and it would not affect your wage or views, what would you do instead? When I was writing these questions, it actually, I was also thinking about the newsletter and thinking about how I would be sad for not uploading for that long because I'd miss you guys. Not because I feel like I had to have my voice out there all the time, saying things, having opinions, um, but because I like the connection of the, of the creation and the fact that it is kind of a conversation and I make a little bit and then you guys say a little bit and then I go away and I think about it and then I make a little bit more. So if I had a good connection with you guys on social media and in the newsletter and I have the good relationship I already do have with the Gumption Club, um, I would, not upload for six months I guess and then I'd probably come back and I'd probably make like more long form vlogs so I'd make stuff like how I finished the end of my book like with lots of like 
a very detailed, like a more detailed vlog with lots of different commentary and reflection. And, and I, do you know what I'd also do? I'd probably produce a walking tour series of London if we're ever allowed to escape again. London now feels like a fictional place to me that I don't live in. Um, I just live near and I'm not allowed near. <laughs> it's really weird, even though I live in zone two. I'd spend a long time doing beautiful shots of different parts of London and then do like curated quirky, um, virtual tours of London that you could watch the video with me and feel like you're going on a walking tour with me around London and it would have loads of like unknown facts about feminism and sidelined communities and like secret knowledge about London because for instance one of my favourite statues is a statue by Embankment and it's of the first woman to ever divorce her husband and it's hidden kind of in a bush and nobody sees it and the story behind it's like really interesting and happens way earlier than you think the first divorced woman the first woman to divorce her husband would have been alive. Um, I haven't asked myself that properly, but I think I'm gonna think about that more. But yeah, I'd probably do a lot of like wheezy way to 30 day challenges, I think as well, <laughs> which I could do. There's no reason for me doing that. It's just that I look at it and go, that's a huge time investment and I've got to make a video every fucking week and I don't have an editor or a team, it's just me. Okay, what's the best thing the algorithm has ever suggested to you or you've discovered through computer suggestion? So by far, one of the best things I've ever discovered is um, Victorian sewing YouTube. Nobody told me to watch that. I don't know why YouTube suggested it to me. I think because I was watching a, uh, like I was watching Get Ready With Me's and somebody, then they suggested a Rachel Maskey video. From me watching that, I basically kind of almost asked the algorithm with my own views, like what else I should be watching and a whole world opened up to me and before you know it, I'm dressing up as a Gibson girl and talking about gaining weight in quarantine. <laughs> the best video the algorithm recently um, suggested to me that I was like, it finally knows me, it was this hella petty video of um, this wonderful YouTuber who I've just forgotten the name of and she's breaking down exactly what Mary Poppins really would have worn and how historically accurate all the costumes of Mary Poppins were. And I was like, this is what, this is what the internet was made for. Number six, what is the best thing you've discovered through human suggestion? Easily, which please, this is a podcast that was kind of like small and really like cultishly addictive at the beginning. And a few people tweeted me being like, I just think you're gonna like this podcast. It's two wonderful feminist Canadian professors getting drunk and rereading the Harry Potter um, series from a feminist and queer and anti-racist perspective and it's just phenomenal. It's really hard to discover podcasts because there aren't really like that many big curation services for them. I'm waiting for the Times review of books but for podcasts to be honest um, but even like their own platforms like iTunes and Spotify are, like quite rubbish at suggesting you stuff, suggesting you podcasts that aren't um, made by the BBC. So I love that I found this podcast through personal recommendation because it's the only way I would have found it. Number seven, what is a better way the algorithm could work? So I think algorithms are really cool, but I think it's if it comes with consent, because what drives me mad is that I subscribe to people and I say, please tell me when this person has a video coming out. <coughs> Crickets. So I think like the algorithm works if you tell it what you want to see. So I'd love to be able to just explicitly put in keywords and be like, I would like to see more of this. <laughs> and I also think that maybe you could do some human curation alongside it that then could feed into an algorithm. So say you could pick like 10 curators, guest curators who are YouTubers for the month and they like physically curated lists of good videos and good YouTubers who are making really good content that they liked and they weren't allowed to like recommend their own stuff. And then from that build an algorithm around what they were recommending. So you had more of like a, a human funnel at the beginning that then maths expanded on. Does that make any sense? I don't know that much about algorithms like from a technical perspective, but I feel like that would be possible. Number eight, um, how can people support your work outside of the algorithm? You can subscribe to the newsletter. I made it very easy for you. That's what you can do. Um, also supporting me on Patreon helps a lot if you can. It's just a dollar per thing um, and you can cut off an amazing community. But I always go on about the Gumption Club on here. So if you like me enough that you'll already know what that is. Um, but assuming that you don't wanna join the Gumption Club, then joining the newsletter, commenting, like actively commenting. It doesn't really matter if, it, if what you say, like that's another frustrating about the things about the algorithm is that an algorithm can love a video if everybody's commenting on it because they've got no way of measuring whether comment whether the comment is negative or positive, which is why a lot of horrific videos, like some real stinkers from the past five years have got to the top of the algorithm and been recommended because people have been commenting and being like, this is a bad video. This is very immoral. You should stop doing this. And the algorithm says, oh, seems like this video is something that people likes. <laughs> um, so anyway, comment, that's beside the point. Commenting is really cool, especially if you want to say something nice, but you don't really have to say anything even that nice 
advice. You can be like, this video was quite good. <laughs> or this video was one of your medium level videos. I don't know. But you know, you don't, you can always just be like, I often say with creators, just, I just say something that's just like, this was great. Or more of this. I just say stuff like that. So it helps their algorithm, even though I don't have anything big to contribute. And a lot of you already do that. And it's really lovely. And, um, I want to thank you for that if anybody who's like properly interacted with the video uh, rather than just viewing it it like really means a lot and it also helps do you support other creators work and if so who i do and i'm also going to turn the light on because it's getting very dark in britain right now i kind of see supporting people on patreon kind of like when you see somebody in a square and they're singing a really good song and you throw throw a, a, a pound in and kind of like a guardian subscription where i'm just like here's my little investment that will hopefully grow a better media and artistic landscape in the future. So the people that I believe are doing that and is why I give to them on Patreon uh, is TLDR News, Amanda Palmer, Jen Campbell, uh, For Harriet, who has taught me more lessons about my whiteness than anyone. And I, I feel quite strongly as well, if you're on the good side of privilege, the good side of privilege, is there ever a good side to privilege? If you're on the the advantageous side of privilege and somebody from the other side is teaching you stuff about your privilege, you should find a way to financially compensate them for that. So that's what I do with For Harriet because I feel like she schools me all the time and I love it. <sighs> Caitlin um, from The Good Death, oh my God. Um, she makes amazing content around death positivity, which is something that I just really believe is gonna change the world and is just really radical and important. Um, so if you don't watch her videos, really do. But even though I don't really watch all of her videos, I kind of just know that she's doing a good thing and filling a void that isn't there. So I'm just like, please take my money and tell me more about embalming. <laughs> Double Down News, who I've talked about before, um, started by George Monbiot, who's one of my most trusted journalists. Julia News, because I love her music. Um, Ray Demo, um, because they are making gender neutral clothing, which I think is really cool in a really like honest, ethical way. Ashlyn Evans, because I love her music too. Um, and Asante Bean, because I love the way she makes content and I want her to make more of it. Okay, it's getting dark, so I should probably go. It's getting dark. Let me tell you a scary story about a future without art. <laughs> it's past my bedtime, um, so I'm gonna go, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you subscribe to Lessons From Lena. Thank you to everybody who's ever supported my channel. Thank you to any artist that lets me support them because there's just so much good stuff happening on the internet. I hope you're having an okay time during this really weird lock-in um, period. If you're getting stressed with social media and too many Zoom calls and everybody knowing where you are all the time, feel, here's your permission slip to check out. There you go. Subscribe to your favorite newsletters. Just check your emails every now and then. And don't worry about it. Anyone who really needs you will have your actual phone number. Thank you so much for watching. Here are some other videos I've made. Here's where you subscribe if you'd like to. And until next time, Frogsnog out.